Welcome to This Week on Main Street. I'm Chris Owens, Executive Director for Noblesville Main Street. And uh, hard to believe, but we're uh, really in the, uh, the, the middle part of September here. It's a big week for Noblesville Main Street. Of course, uh, the duck race is coming up Saturday. We'll talk a, a little bit about that coming up in the final segment of the show. But joining us uh, off the top here is uh, one of our newer physicians with Riverview Health, Dr. Addison Haynes. Welcome, and, and thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Well, we, uh, we certainly appreciate our, our partnership with Riverview. And... Uh, I guess this is uh, kind of coming full circle for you. You're you're Noblesville uh, original. Absolutely. We moved here when I was three, uh, way back when. I won't give that year. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> raised in Noblesville and uh, ended up going to high school on the north side of Indianapolis and then moved away for college and medical school and residency. And uh, now we're back and I've joined Riverview. So well, it's pretty great, excited to be home. to have you and, uh, and your practice here. Um, talk about your, your specialty, osteopathic health. Uh, osteopathic medicine. So um, two forms of healthcare in the United States, MDs and DOs that get trained. Um, same training that the MDs have, but a couple hundred extra hours of manipulation. And uh, a lot of DOs tend to go into um, family practice uh, just because they get more options uh, to, to better help patients. And, you know, we could do surgery and things like that if we wanted to, but I chose family practice because I like seeing people uh, and trying to keep them healthy. So my goal is to, to keep patients as, as healthy as possible. Um, so... Uh, I focus on just everything from uh, newborns to the elderly and everywhere in between. Uh, I do preventative screenings, and then I talk a lot about diet and exercise in the office, and I try to keep people out of the office as much as possible. That's that's the way to go. So Talk a little bit about that, that wellness initiative. It seems to be, uh, as opposed to um, maybe 15, 20 years ago, seems to be really more of a, a national trend of preventative uh, preventative maintenance, I guess, if you will, rather than reactive medicine. Absolutely. And that's the best way to do it. We used to look at it and wait till you got sick and then give you a medicine to make you better and hope that that fixed it. And now we're trying to prevent the problems before they happen. Um, the United States spends way too much money uh, on health care in general. So we just try to focus on keeping you healthy rather than making you healthy again once you get sick. It's a lot easier for you to come in once a year, make sure everything's are going okay, uh, make sure your diet's on track, make sure your weight is in and out of control, make sure your blood pressure's under control, stopping smoking. Those are the big ones that we talk about. Keep you healthy so that you don't end up in 10 years coming in and needing oxygen and a list of medications longer than my arm. So. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, you know, I, I talked a little bit about the duck race this weekend, and uh, so many of our events uh, are outside. Um, you know, I don't think the heat's going to be a factor this weekend, but uh, may still be some heat coming up in, in the, the the next few events that we have. Talk about some of the preventive things that, that people can do outside this time of year. Sure. I mean, hopefully it's not like last weekend because, yeah. man, that would be way too hot. Uh, the best thing I always say, say outside is wear sunscreen. Um, put it on first thing in the morning uh, after you get out of the shower or whatever your morning routine is. Just slather it on. Um, Melanoma is a big risk in the United States, and it goes up every year. And one bad sunburn puts you at an increased risk. So get that sunscreen on early. Reapply it throughout the day. Uh, the second thing is stay hydrated. Even though it may not be 100 degrees, um, it's still important to keep hydrated. Water is obviously the best choice. Sodas and teas can dehydrate you. So just drinking on a little bit of water throughout the day. Um, I recommend good footwear. You know, if you're walking around, seeing the different shops, visiting everything that's around there, something that are good footwear that fit well, that you can tie, stay on your feet without problems. Uh, we don't want to have that. And then I like big, wide brim hats. Try to prevent as much <laughs> sun as possible. You know, you may look like you're uh, from a different generation, or but uh, a big, wide brim hat has a, a lot of good uses. So it could look like the Kentucky Derby. That would Saturday, be great. Yeah, That'd be Dutch fantastic. Race. Yeah, we'll see. Um, so we talked about you coming back to, to Hamilton County. Uh, and you're obviously excited about the, the opportunity with Riverview. What are some of, some of your favorite things? What drew you back to this area? Uh, everything drew me about back to this area. We love the people. I mean, it, you can walk down the street, especially in our neighborhood, and we say hi to our neighbors, and that isn't necessarily the case across the country. And, you know, after getting to live in other areas, I love good Midwestern hospitality. It can't be beat anywhere. The school systems here are great, um, but we also have a ton to do in the area. Um, even just staying local in the county from different parks. Uh, my wife and I love to go frisbee golfing, so Morris Park and Beach has one. There's a, the park, Dillon Park out there mm -hmm. on Hazel Dell. Um, 
different opportunities out there, whether we're just walking in the different parks uh, in the area. I also love food. So any of the local restaurants, I mean, we've got the local eatery and Alexander's and Mm -hmm. Bub's and the list just keeps going on and on and on and great places to eat, great people. Um, It's a a good place to be. Well, and Hamilton County is very uh, well connected by a trail network and uh, it is getting even more connected uh, as we talk about future development in in downtown Noblesville. So uh, very walkable community, very friendly community. And... uh, uh, so if folks want to learn more about your practice, what's the easiest way for them to go about that? Um, the Riverview runs a great website, so we're riverview.org. Um, you can get any information you'd like to about the network there. Um, specifically, my practice is at 146 in Hazel Dell. Um, but if you just go to riverview.org, you can find a physician across the network. My name's in there. You click on the Find a Doctor link, and you can find any sort of doctor that you're looking for. Uh, my, my name and smiling face pops up when you search for me. Um, but then they can also call my office, um, which is... Uh, Oh, my goodness. I forgot my office On the website numbers. as well. It's on the website so. as well. <laughs> <laughs> We're speaking with uh, Dr. Addison Haynes, newly returned to the uh, Noblesville area, but uh, great specialty and, and practice with Riverview Health. Hopefully, you'll uh, get in touch with them if you're in, in need of a, a family physician. And uh, officially, unofficially, whatever you want to call it, welcome back to the community. Well, thank you. I'm excited. All right. We've got a lot more to talk about on the show today. We'll uh, break down the duck race and talk about uh, some arts initiatives happening in Noblesville. We'll be back right after this. You know, uh, when Margaret and I decided to sell the old estate here, we had uh, only one choice in signage. Logan Street signs and banners. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore, but rather located on 10th Street on the south side of Noblesville. Well, we sold the old beauty, and we were able to buy this wonderful estate. And we had so much money left over, I was able to buy this beautiful 1968 Eldorado Cadillac for Margaret. Only 472,000 miles. Margaret loves it because it's got those big seats and that heavy-duty suspension to support her Schvelt frame. Next time you're looking for signs or banners, call old Jim at Logan Street Signs and Banners, 773-7200. Conveniently not located on Logan Street anymore. Everyone knows it's easy to find first-run movies in the big theaters. But where can you go to watch your favorite classic movies on the big screen for the perfect night out? Why rent a flick when you can rent the entire theater? Call today to reserve our 32-seat theater for your next event or just stop by to see what's showing this weekend. The 14 by 7 foot screen and the high quality digital surround sound system offers all the amenities you would expect from the big theaters with a laid back atmosphere and comfortable seating of your own home. Wathart Theater at 1744 South 10th Street in Noblesville gives you the classic movies you want with a big theater experience. Welcome back to This Week on Main Street. I'm Chris Owens, and talking about uh, all things happening in downtown Noblesville, there's quite the uh, arts initiative uh, that's been happening for a while, but it seems like it's catching quite a buzz. I'm joined now by Alice Cavanis gover and Sarah Morin. Uh, talk about your involvement in the arts in downtown Noblesville. Sure. Well, what we've started is something called the Noblesville Interdisciplinary Creativity Expo. And so we were sitting um, downtown drinking tea and coffee. And we're like, you know, we are just so inspired by these, you know, great classic pieces like Pride and Prejudice, To Kill a Mockingbird. And and I'm an author and she's an artist. And we're like, wouldn't it be great to invite the community to make pieces, you know, are inspired by those works? We, when we were first talking about it, what, what struck me about Sarah and this idea is that she, she is so creative in her writing. She has uh, published a novel where she's retelling uh, an age-old fairy tale. 
So she's kind of inspired by something that's been around a long time. And so we kind of went from that. And having been in the art, art community in Noblesville and sort of the surrounding area, I hardly ever leave Noblesville. But, yes. <laughs> you know. A big two of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't need to. But um, we just felt like this would be a really cool event to give people of all ages and all levels of artistic and creative endeavor a safe place to, to show their work, you know, and, and with familiar inspiration. So it wouldn't be, you know, like a really difficult, crazy thing to do, you know. So that's kind of where we came from with that. That's really key. I think one of the things we talk a lot about with Noblesville Main Street is, is removing some of these traditional barriers yes. uh, to, to yes. things like art, yes. politics, mm -hmm. culture. Uh, and it, it's great that you've taken that as a We uh, We project. specifically want people of, you know, from high school age mm -hmm. on up, people who have never put a creative thing out there in the world whether it's music, whether it's a painting, whether it's a fascinator, you know, we've had some, we've had some kind of crazy, it's not big enough for the doctor, he wouldn't like this. Yeah. <laughs> Our doctor would say, get a bigger brain. I gotta go buy a hat. But, you know, we, we want people to make anything inspired and, and put it out there. And there's no judgment, it's not for prizes, there's mm -hmm. no contest. We're just there to feel good about the creative process and to kind of help nurture that spirit in Noblesville, which I think is really growing. Right. Yeah, I think that's really great, too. We started off the summer, the Thursday market, with the, uh, I think it was 1,000 pounds of clay that we cooperated with the art house on. And just to see uh, even my four-year-old get out and, and use yeah. a, a pottery wheel yeah. It was, yeah. was very cool. So I think that's great what you're, you're doing. Uh, so this is all based on classic literature. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an example of the books and the inspiration? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. I'll start you with go first. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, one of ones that I was pushing for was Pride and Prejudice, Jane Austen. And what we've done is we've selected just short passages from each so that way if people are not familiar with it, then they can just focus on that passage. But if they know the whole book, then they can take any section of it. Okay. So, so one thing that I have here, the quote that we selected was, to be fond of dancing was a certain step towards falling in love. And so what I did here was that quote's in the middle, and then I've pasted other quotes about dancing around it. So it's an example of something that you could do. So, And the other three books are Wuthering Heights, Frankenstein, and To Kill a Mockingbird. We kind of chose Frankenstein because that new movie's coming out, mm -hmm. um, and plus I just love it, so <laughs> I kind of know it by heart. Um, to Kill a Mockingbird seemed timely because Harper Lee's published her mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Go Set a Watchman, and that's mm -hmm. kind of controversial, and we both love To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, yeah. And then, See, I um, thought you were going to say you both love controversy. So. Well, we do love that, too. <laughs> That's true it's very too. inspiring. Um, but we knew there would be a lot of people who would want to kind of defend Atticus Finch in creative effort. Mm -hmm. And not surprisingly, we've gotten a lot of submissions for uh, To Kill a Mockingbird based on Atticus Finch. Um, and then the other one is The Wuthering Heights, which we kind of had a little battle about because uh -huh. she's an Austin fan, I'm an Emily Bronte fan, so we were like, who's going to have the most uh, inspired pieces? That's right. Jane Austen or Emily Bronte? So there's a contest going on. <laughs> so, no prize or anything, but it's just a little so, contest. Yes. No, come on, The Wuthering Heights. No. <laughs> so it, it, will it, is there a deadline? For, there is a uh, deadline. Um, we would like to have the online forms, which you can submit via email or snail mail, mm -hmm. um, uh, by September 23rd. That said, you don't have to have your pieces completed by September 23rd. Okay. That's just kind of when we want the forms in, so we know what we're looking at for the two-night event. And what's the website where folks can download the form? Sure. The key word to remember is NICE, because that's our acronym. Yes. Um, so it's NICE Artists at wordpress.com, but just look for nice and then stick in Noblesville and it'll Google it up. Yeah. Okay. So. And then when will these be presented and where? What's the, what these, are the will be, these will be presented October 2nd and 3rd at Logan Street Sanctuary, which is 1274 Logan Street here in Noblesville. And I want to give a huge shout out to Logan mm -hmm. Street Sanctuary because um, it's a fairly new music and arts venue that John Gilmore, who's a local physician, uh, physician, <laughs> musician, <laughs> sorry John, you're Dr. John now, um, has, has created for our community and it's a wonderful place and he's basically letting us do our two night event at no charge. Yeah. So we're so grateful for that because we're kind of doing this on a wing and a prayer. 
we hope in the future to be nonprofit and have a little more funding and stuff, but we're just winging it, you know. Sure. And so it's a huge, huge um, benefit to our event to have that venue. Um, but it'll be October 2nd and 3rd, which is a Friday and a Saturday night. Uh, we're going to start about 6.30, mm -hmm. have like viewing presentations. We'll start about 7, 7.30. Mm -hmm. and, and tea. And tea. We're going to have Pam's Tea Shop is bringing in a tea table to serve okay. tea, and, and which we thought would go very nicely with some of our UK yes. <laughs> themed, <laughs> themed, what, three out of four British, you know, so let's not, let's not, uh, let's have a cuppa, you know, so, so and, that'll be uh, pretty cool. And we'll have some folks downtown, uh, not far from Logan Street Sanctuary for First Friday, so yes, uh, we right. will try to Hopefully send people wander over up. Yes. Uh, to the the Logan Street Sanctuary, which is actually just around the corner from my house. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so I'll see if I can get down there myself. That would be so great. what's what's the vision for the future? You talked about uh, after this event happens, October 2nd and 3rd, uh, where does NICE go from here? Well, uh, probably immediately we'll all take naps. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then we will put our uh, nose to the grindstone and work on the not-for-profit paperwork and what we need to do for that because that really is one of the the huge goals that we have mm -hmm. we feel like we kind of put this together almost not with enough lead time we we need to give the artists and the creative people more time we need to um, advertise further in advance we need it to be something that is being talked about and known about a little more um, but i see us just doing this every year picking new passages new books getting feedback from the people who submit and the community in general. Uh, we've been working with the high schools to uh, mm -hmm. work with um, uh, the, like for example in Noblesville, uh, Craig Helming of the art department and Bill Kenley in the English department have uh, been talking to their students and their colleagues and we'd like to get, you know, like reading lists and who, what are, what are the kids reading in school? Maybe we could have some inspired passages with those, with those kind of books and not just the older classics. So yeah, kind of helping people connect mm -hmm. with, I mean, these things can be very distant to some people. And so just, you know, how do you get that modern perspective? How do you yeah. connect to it from a modern perspective? Or worse, you're sitting in class and you're bored to tears and you hate the book. Well, right. <laughs> you know, some people 20 years later, they might, they might, you know, have a different reaction and yeah. after life experiences and things. So that's one of the reasons we're so excited to have like high school students yeah. and, and, uh, older adults participating because we're going to have such a range of interpretation and inspiration and that's kind of what inspires us yeah. to just want to build and build and build on it. Well there's a really great uh, creative element in downtown Noblesville and as a uh, uh, as a musician but a person who I don't consider myself to be that creative I know and just having a uh, conversation with Gabriel Lehman last mm -hmm. week while he was doing oh, the mural he's cool. on the the FFNS building uh, located just off uh, 8th Street and uh, Maple uh, just to hear his thought process mm -hmm. as he yeah. created that was I mean it was phenomenal it was well, and that's what we're hoping for our two night event is since we're uh, we're having our artists present their work in little like four minute segments, they will be able to share with us some of that process. I mean, we've asked in the in the forum to give us a little detail of how you were inspired or whatever, but I think it'd be really neat for everybody who comes to just hear those people really tell their story a little bit, what, what they connected with. And um, that's something that I've experienced and I think you've experienced too. We met at a nickel plate arts event mm -hmm. and a lot of times there's an opportunity in the nickel plate events to kind of talk to the artists who are there, who are showing work. And that's something that I think we really wanted to include in our event is that, um, that ability to connect with the artist who's connecting with those past literature writers, those, those artists from the past. And so um, we partnered with Nickel Plate to help. They're helping us with some of our advertising and getting the word out. As, as you have, so, you know, we've got a lot of shout-outs to do. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not enough time for all our shout-outs. Well, give, give the website one more time if folks want to know. Sure. It's niceartists at wordpress.com. Okay. And I believe, uh, if we haven't already, we will link to that off the uh, Noblesville Main Street website, uh, and it's on our social media as well. So, uh, Alice Cavanagh Gover, Sarah mm -hmm. Uh, Sarah Morton, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Um, and thank you for what you're doing for the arts in downtown Noblesville. Thank I you think for it's, having us. Uh, yeah. It's a very exciting time downtown. It and really is, I think yeah. if you, you can't drive through and see unique things happening, then we need to seriously talk. Yeah, so. that's exactly right. <laughs> All right. It's, uh, it's the week of the duck race. And coming up, we're going to talk more about that with Perry Williams. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to This Week on Main Street. Chris Owens here along with Perry Williams, uh, wrapping up our, our traditional third segment of the show, talking about the duck race. It's Saturday. It's, uh, it's here. <laughs> it's hard to believe. Yeah, it is here. It is here. And uh, Duck Race tickets are still available for purchase and will be right up until about 4.30 at the event on Saturday. Uh, We'll have them at our Thursday market, and uh, they're also available downtown at uh, four restaurant retail locations, including Noble Coffee and Tea, Logan Village Mall, A Corner Cottage, and Courtney's Kitchen. And don't forget, we'll have them on sale Saturday at at the the Farmer's Farmer's Market. Market. Right up until the event, uh, like I said, till about 4.30 or so. Uh, so the farmer's market will take place 8 a.m. to noon, as is tradition on Saturday. Uh, but a big night coming up at the farmer's market, or the Thursday market, excuse me, this week. Uh, tomorrow night, actually, it's our Noblesville Firefighter Chili Cook-Off. Oh, and that's always a fun event and uh, very competitive. Very I mean, even though those guys are protecting us they uh hey a chili recipe is sacred uh, yeah yeah you know, that's especially sacred if it's, a, if it's a, a family chili recipe uh they go after it they do and talk uh, some smack and the know. the public can uh engage uh by uh coming down and sampling so the the thursday market happens from 5 to 8 p.m it's in the uh urban park or otherwise known as the alley adjacent to the the visitor center at 839 connor street and uh, it'll take place from 5 to 8 p.m I think we'll have uh, several participants there, and you can actually sample uh, each type of chili, and then you vote uh, based on filling the uh, fireman's boot with uh, your financial contribution. And then, of course, all those uh, contributions go to the the Fallen Firefighters Memorial Fund with the Hamilton County Firefighters Union. Absolutely. So it's a very, very good cause. It is a good cause, and it's the first of of two chili cook-offs for Noblesville Main Street. We'll actually do a county-wide chili cook-off on October 17th, the last day of the farmer's market this year. So uh, that's coming up on, on Thursday, and then, of course, Saturday, Farmer's Market, 8 to noon, and then the uh, White River Celebration kicks off at noon on the Logan Street Bridge. Uh, we'll have a bridge fair and live music out there, uh, beer garden and food through Courtney's Kitchen, uh, and then long about 5 o'clock, the, uh, the train will pull up, and I'll jump on board with our uh, honorary duck captain, which is a, a new feature this year, and we'll, we'll dump the ducks into the river, uh, pull out the winners, and make announcements. Sounds exciting. So we're going to be busy on Saturday, right? Saturday will be very busy. September is a very busy month. Yeah, it is. Uh, we had a meeting today, a promotion meeting today, uh, um, this morning, in fact, uh, at 830. Um, but there's a lot of activities going on. And one of the comments you made was, you know, uh, the street dance in July, that's huge for us. And But September, we just got one event right after another so let's talk a little bit about that. well thankfully we're not responsible for all of those events uh but just tomorrow night alone so tomorrow night there's a, a great fundraiser for meals on wheels of hamilton county it's the uh, dancing with our stars event uh hosted by our buddy brandon bennett and uh, be a great fundraiser for them friday night is the mayor's ball of course our event on saturday Guys, you fast forward to next week. I think we'll be back here doing a show on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, September 17th is the Chocolate Trail, which is a a great chance for people to uh, come to downtown Noblesville. That'll happen in conjunction with the last Thursday market of the year. Again, that's from uh, 5 to 8 p.m. You pick up a passport and uh, take it to participating locations in downtown, uh, get a chocolate treat and get a sticker or a stamp. And then you could bring those passports back to the market at 8 o'clock on that Thursday night, and we'll give away some door prizes, have uh, some libations and live music, be a good time. And then, of course, we roll into um, the 19th, and that's a huge day in downtown Noblesville. It's uh, traditionally the the third Saturday in September is the home tour uh, for the Preservation Alliance, and they're expecting a a big crowd for that. But it's also uh, the Old Mill Festival. And uh, right now we've got uh, almost 30 vendors signed up and ready to go for that event. It'll take place 9 to 4 on the uh, uh, on 9th Street right now. Um, and then uh, you get a little bit later in the month, and, uh, of course, our, our farmer's markets continue. Uh, but then we're really setting up for that first Friday in October. And I've not been shy about admitting that that's my favorite one of the year. Uh, so October 2nd, uh, again, from uh, 5 to 8 p.m. is the schedule right now. We'll have our construction event, Darren Peterson and, and his, uh, his group of Helpers uh, are going to have four sites, and we'll preview that coming up in a couple weeks once we have all the final details worked out. That's also the uh, uh, public opening of the Riverwalk Depot, uh, which we've had a, a little hand in helping with, but uh, kudos to the, the Street Department, Economic Department, and uh, the Parks Department for their collaboration on that event. 
Uh, we'll have a soup cook-off that evening on the northwest corner of the square. The Lions Club will be out there doing hot ham and cheese. Uh, it's also our fall festival, so we'll have a, um, a movie uh, pending weather with the parks department. And uh, we'll have some pumpkins for decorating and all kinds of fun stuff. You know, Chris, I, uh, I walked over yesterday uh, morning uh, while I was taking my walk to the, to the new Riverwalk Park, uh, mm-hmm. Pocket Park there. It's really, really looking nice. And uh, it, so if people get a chance, go by the Pocket Park right there by uh, Bowling's Cleaners and right behind uh, Courtney's Kitchen. There's mm-hmm. a little park there that was just basically weeds. So. Yeah, uh, landscaping soon to go in. I actually have five bags of irises in my truck right now. Um, <laughs> from the Keep Noblesville Beautiful board meeting last night, I inherited those, and special thanks to uh, uh, Hamilton County Master Gardeners for their donation. It's been really, really neat to see the collaboration, and there's donations from uh, Sagamore Ready Mix out there, from Lowe's, uh, from Green Vista Landscape, just a, a lot of people coming together to make a a really unique little uh, portion of Noblesville. Absolutely. And of course, uh, one other thing we're talking about, we just sent the release on it yesterday, uh, we've got the Scarecrow Contest coming up, and details of that are available on our, our Facebook page and our website. There's some uh, restrictions on height and uh, Scarecrow alignment, I guess I should say, based on some uh, liberties Past experience. taken last year. <laughs> Uh, but we will have Scarecrow frames available. They're due, I believe, on uh, Friday the 24th uh, to the Noblesville Main Street office, and we'll put those up the next week uh, all around the Courthouse Square on, on light poles. There'll be a way you can vote as part of that October 1st Friday, and then they will stay up uh, for the duration of the month of October. You know, the one thing that uh, last year, that was wa- quite a conversational piece, you know, all those sure on was. the light poles. There yeah. was a lot of comments, and, uh, of course, uh we put them up last year, uh, and at the end it started raining, so uh, we kind of got wet at the end. Yeah, but that's I, okay. You know, I wouldn't have envisioned that you could actually buy a three or four foot zip tie. But yeah, they, <laughs> they came in very handy. So we'll, yeah, we learned how to put them up last. We'll year, get then. those on pre-order this year, and uh, be looking for more information on the Scarecrow contest on our, our website and again on our social media. So that that wraps it up. We hope to see everybody else uh, out this Saturday for the White River celebration from 12 to 6 p.m. And uh, again, don't forget the Chocolate Trail next Thursday uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. Thanks for joining us.